Welcome to St. Jude. Please stand. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore thee. Infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign. Infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. My brothers and sisters, let us at this time call to mind our sins before our God of mercy, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our wills to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, for Jews first and then Greek. For in it is revealed the righteousness of God from faith to faith, as it is written, the one who is righteous by faith will live. The wrath of God is indeed being revealed from heaven against every impiety and wickedness of those who suppress the truth by their wickedness. For what can be known about God is evident to them because God made it evident to them. Ever since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes of eternal power and divinity have been able to be understood and perceived in what he has made. As a result, they have no excuse, for although they knew God, they did not accord him glory as God or give him thanks. Instead, they became vain in their reasoning, and their senseless minds were darkened. While claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for the likeness of an image of mortal man or of birds or of four-legged animals or of snakes. Therefore, God handed them over to impurity through the lust of their hearts for the mutual degradation of their bodies. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and revered and worshipped the creatures rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The heavens proclaim the 
glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day pours out the word to, to do day, and night to night imparts knowledge. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. Not a word, nor a discourse, whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of, to, of the world their message. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. After Jesus had spoken, a Pharisee invited him to dine at his home. He entered and reclined at table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. The Lord said to him, O oh, you Pharisees, Although you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, inside you are filled with plunder and evil. You fools, did not the maker of the outside also make the inside? But as to what is within, give alms and behold, everything will be clean for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Law is a part of any society, its subcultures, its institutions, and other social units. It may be moral or amoral, written or unwritten, but it has its place. It is purposeful and meaningful and necessary for communal living. It is for, for our own good and for the common good. In an old Academy Award movie named A Man for All Seasons, St. Thomas More was quoted as saying, when he insisted that King Henry VIII not divorce his wife, give the devil his due when it comes to law. In other words, the law is prone to misuse, but necessary and to be obeyed. Jesus, too, would not quibble with the necessity of law. After all, he himself said he did not come to abolish the law, but to complete it. But he too recognized its flaws and limits and potential misuse. He does not question observance of the moral law given to us in scripture. He only questions the insisted upon observance of man-made traditions and rituals championed by the Pharisees. The Pharisees were prone to ignore common sense, the reasoning behind the institution of the law, or legitimate exceptions to its observance when it would be more loving to forego obedience. The observance of the law became an end in itself and the epitome of faith and their practice of religion. Observance of their purity laws and other man-made traditions became more important than doing the most loving thing. More egregiously, mere observance became cover or provided rationalization for works of evil. For them, religion became going through the motions and feeling justified by so doing. In today's gospel, Jesus sees right through them and says they are filled with plunder and evil underneath the veneer of religious observance. We may look from afar and judge them, but are we that different? Do we not tend to judge the faith of our kids by Sunday mass attendance and not by their trust in God and their relationship with him? Are we also not prone to show up at church, even help out, 
without that same relationship with God? Or do we cover what we are into by going to church regularly? Or are we also prone to mere observance while overlooking a loving heart? Jesus is looking for hearts that are open to his love and that love him in return and love their neighbors, not soulless observers of empty ritual. And he tells them so. Jesus is looking to clean them up on the inside, not the outside of the cup and dish they use to eat and drink. Jesus does want to clean us up, but on the inside, for that to happen, we are asked to seek beyond rote obedience to the rules in hopes that that alone will bring us abundant and eternal life. We are asked to seek a personal relationship with God and to allow him to transform our insides into hearts that love. Never perfectly, but hearts that are in the right place and that mean well, even if sometimes we fail. Such religion is law-abiding, but governed by love, and is real, meaningful, and fulfilling, not hypocritical and empty. May God bless you. As we gather together today with confidence in the Father's love, we bring our needs to him. For an increase in religious vocations, may the Lord bless those discerning priesthood or consecrated life with generous and open hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all public authorities, leaders of nations and governments, and those entrusted with the welfare of their people, let us pray to the Lord. For all who are dealing with the scars of war, conflict, or violence, may the healing power of Christ restore their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the community gathered today, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide us in our daily lives and decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. For Leo Sanchi and Maureen McMahon, and for all who have died in the hope of rising with Christ, may they soon rest in his peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For those special intentions we may hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, source of all goodness, hear our prayers and grant them according to your holy will. We ask this through your Son, Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, 
for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Ronald Hicks our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into the world, but also seek to be my best.
for those who may be viewing from home an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepare for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first Let us say a prayer for our daily dose of strength and protection from all sides. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, <coughs> by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at St. Jude in New Lenox, where we continue to live stream Mass every weekday mornings, Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m., and weekends Saturday at 5 p.m. and Sunday at 9 a.m. Masses. Live attendance at 7.30 a.m. daily Mass is always welcome. It is held here in the main church. We're glad you found us online today. Please consider coming in the doors when the time is right. When you join us around the table of the Lord, we all 